You bet. We are going to go ahead. Oh, and again, uh, for folks that ask questions that I didn't get to uh, bring to Charlie, we will circle back with him and uh, see if we can get a response to you and then make sure that we get that posted on the website as well. <clears throat> so our next presentation is on the Harney County Wildfire Collaborative. And so we have Brenda Smith, uh, Executive Director, and Ben Kate, uh, Ecological uh, Coordinator for the High Desert Partnership. So welcome to both of you. And let's get your presentation going here. And I think we are ready then, Brenda, when you are. Great. Well, thank you all. Uh, we appreciate the invitation to present uh, to WAFWA and a special thanks to Tom for reaching out uh, to us to speak about the Harney County Wildfire Collaborative. When Tom asked me to present, I, uh, because, because High Desert Partnership is a collaborative organization, I quickly uh, roped in my, one of my team members at High Desert Partnership, Ben Kate, who's our ecological initiatives coordinator, and he's going to be doing uh, most of the presenting today, but uh, we've basically broken the presentation into, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what High Desert Partnership is and where we're located, and then Ben's going to launch into um, uh, the efforts of the Harney County Wildfire Collaborative. So with that, next slide. So just a frame of reference, um, High Desert Partnership uh, works in Harney County, Oregon. We're in southeastern Oregon. Um, we are uh, a county of 10,000 square miles with about 7,300 uh, residents uh, scattered across um, the county. Primarily, uh, you know, natural resource-based communities and um, interestingly, uh, land ownership is about 75% uh, federal at, or uh, government managed, 25% uh, private. So a big chunk of the ground is uh, federal managed. We uh, were considered the high desert and uh, ecosystems and we're um, kind of smack dab in uh, the sagebrush Sea of the Northern Great Basin. Um, next slide. So High Desert Partnership is a, uh, a nonprofit that operates in Harney County. Uh, we've been in existence for about 15 years and we're really about uh, bringing folks together to find common ground. Um, and we do that by supporting a number of initiatives. Uh, we, we have a forest collaborative, we have a wetlands initiative, uh, the, the wildfire collaborative, which you're going to hear about today. But um, we're interested in, you know, this holistic um, solving problems, complex problems holistically. So we also have a youth initiative and interested in creating opportunities for our youth in Harney County as well as, as growing uh, our rural economy. The next slide. And Brenda, you are scooting out of the screen. Yep, if you could. <laughs> We're on the board here because Ben and I are trying to social distance. <laughs> oh, well then, you know, I wondered about that. So you do whatever you need to do to keep yourself safe. <laughs> oh. So uh, we'd like to think that, uh, you know, working together is a bit of a culture in Harney County, we've, uh, we've been uh, bringing collaboration and uh, diverse partners together for a number of years. Um, but, uh, but our partners are just not our community members. It's, it's all those that have a stake in Harney County that, uh, that uh, you know, basically have a concern for um, this area. And our team uh, is uh, a team of, of seven right now. And we, we do all kinds of things to support our partners in collaboration. And among those things, if you'll go to the next slide. Um, is uh, 
is, is really trying to be consistent in our support. So uh, one thing that we do is that when we have collaborative meetings, we always have professional facilitation. Um, ben works um, hard across all of our ecological initiatives. Uh, as a liaison between funders and partners, we do help our partners find funding. Um, we identify who needs to be at the table and, and do all we can to bring folks to the table. Uh, we also do um, outreach and communications. So all of our uh, collaboratives, we uh, have a communications coordinator who, who helps in that um, effort as well. So with that, um, that's just sort of a brief introduction to our organization, High Desert Partnership. And Ben's gonna talk to you all about our, our wildfire collaborative. So thanks. All right, next slide, please. So uh, thanks for the introduction, Brenda. And now on to the formation of the wildfire collaborative. So. Uh, this effort was really pulled together out of the fact that over the course of just a couple of years uh, between the Holloway fire, the Miller Homestead fire, the Buzzard Complex fire between 2012 and 2014, uh, over a million and a half acres of sage step habitat burned in Harney County. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, Wildfire Collaborative was formed at the end of 2014. Move on to the next slide, please. So the purpose and focus of the group is to reduce the potential for and the impact of mega fires in Harney County and the restoration of sagebrush rangeland uh, in Southeast Oregon and mega fires. We're talking about these large scale 100,000 plus acre fires and the picture there in the background, uh, as far as the eye can see, that is all black. It's a little difficult to see in the picture, but there is uh, no vegetation on those hills. Uh, next slide, please. So a few of the partners are our local rangeland fire protection associations. I'll refer to those as RFPAs from uh, here on out. And you guys had a presentation about that this morning. So hopefully you got a little bit of background on RFPAs. Uh, we have federal, tribal, state, county agencies, conservation organizations, uh, scientific community and the ranching community. Uh, all working together to try to figure out uh, how best to tackle these large scale uh, mega fires. So next slide. A little bit about the collaborative. Uh, they identified the need for a different type of con conversation around fire. Uh, basically the status quo wasn't working very well. Uh, and they wanted to better understand the issues related to why these fires were getting so large um, and burning with such high intensity. And they really uh, found three topics related to wildfire that they could address. Uh, suppression, and that is how to be more effective at suppressing fires that start. Uh, prevention, prevent, how to prevent fires that do start from uh, becoming large scale fires. And then restoration, uh, how to best recover from large scale fires when they do occur. And when we're talking about recovery, uh, we really are talking ecological recovery, but also the social and economic impacts uh, that come with a large scale mega fire. Uh, like Brenda mentioned, we're a natural resource based economy and uh, the grazing resources uh, in the Sage Steppe are really crucial to a lot of the ranching economy that happens here in Harney County. So uh, next slide, please. So the first step the Wildfire Collaborative uh, chose to tackle was suppression. Uh, they needed to tackle this first to build relationships. Uh, at the time, there were really strained relationships between our RFPAs and our federal uh, firefighting agencies. Um, so there, oh, sorry. Um, Yeah, so there were strained relationships. Uh, they really weren't uh, operating together. They were literally not on the same uh, radio frequencies. Uh, so pulling together the RFPAs with the uh, federal agencies was huge. Um, these 
RFPAs are often the first responders to fires uh, based on their proximity uh, and their location in the most rural parts of the county. Um, Kearney County has six RFPAs and a total of 178 firefighters with a boundary of 3.8 million acres. So these are in really, really rural areas that are difficult for agency staff to get to and the RFPAs are, are often the first ones to get to fires to start. Um, go ahead and move to the next, next slide. So the goal is to create a cohesive firefighting resource, um, establishing a shared knowledge of the current conditions and reviewing the fire history in Harney County. So um, this gets at how the frequency and size of fires have changed through time and what factors are driving those changes. Um, mega fires result for different reasons in different habitats and things like how we manage the landscape over the past 150 years with our suppression efforts, um, conversion to invasive annual grasses, uh, warming, changing climate. Um, so really getting a common understanding of the issues around mega fires. Uh, they clarified an MOU between RFPAs and federal agencies um, and developed creative ways to share training, um, communications tools, equipment, things like that. And it really resulted in a lot better relationship between our agency, firefighting resources, and the RFPAs. And it ultimately resulted in the creation of a new position. That is a liaison position uh, housed in the Burns Interagency Fire Zone. That is sort of the, the middleman between our RFPA resources and our agency fire resources. Uh, we'll move to the next slide. Next thing that they uh, chose to tackle in the realm of suppression was a network of remote uh, cameras for increasing uh, response time and the ability to detect fires quickly when they do start. So. This is a, a camera that is uh, publicly accessible. Um, so anybody can go online and look at the image uh, that's being displayed and this effectively crowdsources uh, fire observation. So you can look at that website, hit a button that says report and report a fire to an agency. Um, agency staff has the ability to move the camera to point in a specific direction to uh, basically be able to uh, locate fires faster in the really, really remote areas of Southeast Oregon. Um, next slide. So after tackling the suppression issue, working better with RFPAs, um, getting a series of uh, remote cameras set up, they moved on to prevention. And this really talks about keeping fires from becoming large when they do start. Uh, in Harney County, over 80% of fires are started by lightning. So we know that we're not going to stop all fires from starting, um, but only a small percentage of those fires become these large scale mega fires. Um, and the national policy direction in relation to sage grouse uh, management, fire was identified as one of the key threats to sage grouse. And at the time that the wildfire collaborative was forming, that was uh, a really big issue that they were trying to tackle. Um, next slide. So the sort of the way that they went about uh, the prevention issue was to identify a pilot project to work on. And the approach they went with here is to protect the best of the best. So what is our biggest, best, most valuable sage grouse habitat, most intact sagebrush step ecosystem um, in our area? And, uh, They've, they identified the Pueblo Mountain uh, Range in Southeast Oregon, kind of on the uh, Oregon-Nevada border. And this area was pretty large. Uh, it was too big to be considered a pilot project, uh, totaling almost 220,000 acres. And so they established a subcommittee to work on uh, sort of narrowing that down. And they broke, they broke that 220,000 acre area into seven smaller subunits and identified values, threats, and resources for each of those subunits and rank them according to uh, project criteria. So you move to the next one, please. 
So this is just a picture of the uh, sage grouse packs in Oregon, priority areas for conservation. And then the little uh, oval kind of at the bottom of the screen there is the area that they they chose to work. Yep. So I can move on to the next slide. So this is going to be a zoom in of that uh, that area. If you can click the next, it's not the next slide. There's a series of uh, things here. So there's a road that was identified um, that they wanted to work on, and the where the the subunit they chose to work on was a total of 26,000 acres they were trying to protect uh, with an actual proposed treatment of just 2,000 acres right along that roadway. So the the image you're looking at now is um, a fire transmission model. So it's basically a map showing the likelihood of fire spreading through an area. And the red is high likelihood of fire transmission. And so they, they're looking at this roadway as being essentially uh, a, a highway for fire to transmit through that area. And they wanted to focus in on that area as a place to alter fuel structure in such a way that that roadway could be used as an anchor point for fire suppression efforts rather than a highway for fire spread. And so essentially creating a, a fuel break for um, fire, fire staff to anchor off of uh, to suppress fire if it were to start in that area. Uh, let me go ahead and move to the next slide. So uh, their uh, prevention plan for this pilot project area they chose to work on along the road in the Pueblo Mountains um, is sort of a multi-tiered uh, project. And the, the idea was to alter fuel structure uh, to promote a state B, if you're thinking of the state and transition model for sagebrush, so a perennial grassland. Uh, primarily what's there now is either state A or state D, so either sagebrush dominated or annual grass dominated landscape. And so we wanted to get that to a state B perennial grassland dominated in order to uh, alter fire behavior, flame lengths, make it easier for firefighting resources to catch a fire on that road if there one were to start in that area. Um, so first thing that they did was improve road access. Road conditions were really horrible down there. It would take a long time for firefighting resources to get to the area um, and then implement the early detection cameras to make it quicker uh, detection times for fires when they do start. And then there was a series of treatments to alter fuel structure, which included uh, prescribed burning followed up by herbicide application of a mazepic to control annual grasses. There's brush mowing to reduce uh, the amount of sagebrush right along the roadway, which would alter fire behavior. If fire were to start there, you get lower flame lengths, things like that. A series of water developments along the roadway to both uh, disperse cattle a little more evenly along the road and also be a place that uh, firefighters could get water. Um, and then targeted grazing along the roadway followed by seeding of, uh, of perennial grasses. And so this project ultimately resulted in a Pueblo Mountain pilot project EA, um, which was approved last year and treatment started in the fall of 2019 with the prescribed burn and an herbicide treatment along that road. Uh, we're going to follow up this spring with monitoring to uh, sort of to see the effects and the success of that paired prescribed fire herbicide treatment to determine whether seeding uh, this fall should occur. So next slide please. So after uh, the prevention, they wanted this, this group wanted to tackle restoration. Um, and they selected a second pilot project area in the Stinking Water Mountains, uh, focusing on an already imperiled site. So look at the picture in the background. Uh, this site has been burned multiple times uh, in the past 10 years. It also includes a much more diverse land ownership 
uh, a lot of private and public land interface um, and allows us to test more tools and techniques to combat uh, these mega fires. You can move to the next slide, please. So really with this map, I just wanted to show the land ownership in this area. Um, it's a pretty large landscape, a uh, project area of 320,000 acres and the blue being BLM and the white being private. So there's a good mix of public and private. Um, the NRCS is doing some work in this area around annual grasses. And, and so um, it also has the, the big three threats for sagebrush ecosystems being juniper encroachment, encroachment invasive annual grasses, and an altered fire regime. Uh, like I said, this area has burned multiple times in the past 10 years. Um, we go ahead and move on to the next. So in the short time, the Wildfire Collaborative has been around since 2014. We've uh, already seen some successes, which kind of hinge on building a strong, trusting relationships with partners. Uh, they established agreement to alter fuel structure in a WSA in the Pueblo Mountains. Um, they've increased the functionality of between uh, RFPAs and federal agencies, and now we're moving on to more of a, a restoration focused project. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide. And so the, the future for the Wildfire Collaborative um, in the area of mega fires, we're committed to preventing fire, fires whenever possible and restoring the land when they do occur. And it's uh, the diverse group and the body of knowledge and skills and abilities of everyone that comes to the, the table for these efforts that make it possible. And I think that is it. There might be one more slide. But yeah. With that, we can take a few questions if we have time. I think we ran a little long, sorry. Uh, no, I think, um, I think you are okay. We, we do have uh, a couple of minutes. I think we could take some questions. I'm super uh, anxious to see Ben how you and Brenda are going to just slide back and forth on that bench. It's for social distancing, but <laughs> appreciate you doing that. I'm looking up to see if we have any questions. I'm looking at any written questions that may have come in or hands raised. Um, I don't see any. Liz, do you have any on your end that I'm not seeing? No, I don't see any yet. Okay. Give it just a minute here. I have to say, um, boy, uh, Harney County sounds like a pretty great place to live if, if uh, people are that neighborly. It's, it was very, uh, uh, was very impressive. Appreciate that. Uh, not seeing any questions then, it looks like you might be off the hook right now, but if we do get in any uh, that we need to forward to you, Ben and Brenda, we will most certainly do that. And thank you very much for the presentation. Very helpful. And again, I think terrific food for thought for the breakout groups next week.